Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today we is a not a good day at the uh, at the homestead. We had a bit of a chicken apocalypse here that we have to address. And I thought, well, all right, while I'm fresh in my uh, discontent, um, let's talk about what's going on here. Just kind of how I let my guard down and now I'm paying for it. So this area here for the past year has been our chicken yard, if you will. This is where I'd had the electric poultry netting around the back end of the greenhouse. The chickens come out here and of course over the winter they just decimated this it looked like the surface of the moon so over time i've just been letting them out in the mornings and then liam comes down and closes them up at night and that's been fine we haven't had any predator issues in a long time um, hawks have not been an issue owls have not been an issue um, ground predators not an issue because we've got all this electric fence around us kind of kind of bracketed so in my mind hey we're safe we don't have to worry about predators as much now so this morning, which is Sunday morning, Kelly and I and the boys were kind of kicking it in the living room, doing church online, and just enjoying the Sunday morning, a little bit of rain going on, and I get a call from my neighbor who lives over a half a mile that way, and he says, there's chickens in my yard that really look like your chickens. I'm thinking, that can't be. That's way too far for my chickens to go. So I hop out, uh, hop out, I hop in some clothes, hop in the side by side, come down here and there's not a chicken around down here. I'm like, uh-oh, and then this is what I see. So the wind's kind of had its way with things here, but see, there's a lot of feathers scattered there. You see, there's feathers scattered here. There's feathers over here in the mulch. And then right here is where I, I find my first casualty. So uh, one of my Wyandots dead there. Then over here was my broody chicken, Australorp, dead. Down here, two more dead in the meadow. And there's one actually dead right on the edge of the driveway. And I found a fifth one dead. I'm not sure where it was. It was somewhere right in here. So needless to say, I am distraught. So before this morning, I had roughly 50 chickens, maybe 45. I hadn't counted them in a while, but 45 to 50 chickens. And... So there's absolutely none here. I didn't see anywhere, just scanning the, our little valley here, not a one. So I get on the side by side, go all the way down to my neighbors, and there's six of them down below their house, which is even further away, uh, kind of hanging out in their garden area. So I come back up, get Kelly and the boys, and then we start doing reconnaissance. And what's funny, um, fortunately, uh, we actually found a lot more uh, they were kind of hiding in the woods in different places, tucked up under things. It was almost like an Easter egg hunt, uh, literally finding chickens. It took us the better part of an hour to either catch up the chickens that were down here and put them in a cage and drive them back up, or at one point we're all just walking up the valley, just conducting a, a march, getting the chickens to come up. And of course, as soon as they get to an area that they're familiar with, they were able to come back in. Hmm. So what was our casualty count? Well, I apologize for the graphicness if you think this is too graphic, but this is homesteading, this is farming. So there's Bard Rock, definitely an egg producer. She was a good one. One of my little Australorps, she was broody. You can see she had plucked all of her feathers off, so she was a broody one. She wasn't laying, but she was always good to set on a nest, and so she's gone. One of our uh, Americanas, found it. That's the one I found all the way down in the driveway. One of Camlin's Wyandots, and then another Americana. So as you can see, these are all and these are all hens. And what's crazy is there's just tiny little puncture marks right at their neck. Um, nothing's been eviscerated. Nothing's been chewed off. This attack obviously had to happen between 7:45 and 10 a.m. this morning because I came down, let them out at 7:45. Everything was fine. And then 10 a.m. is when I got the phone call from my neighbor. So uh, if you notice, all five of these carcasses are hens. And that's unfortunate when a ground predator, or any predator for that matter, goes after a hen or a rooster. You know, the roosters can get away pretty fast. The hens, unfortunately, when they're in this time of year, when they're breeding, then they usually just hunker down like they're going to get bred by a rooster. You, know, you find that when you're trying to chase them and catch them. Sometimes they'll just hunker down. So um, whatever killed them obviously he was able to take advantage of that situation. Now the fact that the, all five of them were wide open in the pasture 
and not carried off. Again, I, I don't know if some were carried off. Um, we, we tried to look for some uh, paw prints around. We couldn't find any, any uh, footprint signs. But this leads me to believe that this is a dog. And obviously it's not our dog. Our dog was inside with us. Um, this leads me to believe it was a dog, whether it was a feral dog or, or um, something else. The fact that it just attacked it at the neck, broke the neck, or punctured it. Not a lot of blood. Again, not a lot of eviscerate, not a lot of uh, nothing chewed off. Then that leads me to believe it's a dog. So shame on me for obviously putting my guard down and uh, thinking that things are going to be okay. So you may be asking, what do you do with your chickens that have been killed by predators? Well, I consult the local drunks over here. This is what I call them. They lay around like a bunch of drunks. I hate to see anything go to waste. Obviously, I cannot process these chickens. I cannot eat them myself. This is really good protein. It's clean protein, obviously. Once they get a get a smell of the blood in them, then I believe they'll open them up if they have in the past. Eat your chicken! So the plan will be tonight to come back down when everybody's ready to go to roost. A, make sure everyone goes back to roost because it's a stressful thing like this. They may not come back to this area. Um, but that'll be the plan. And then get a count. I, um, yeah, it is unfortunate to lose five hens, at least five hens. That's what I have evidence of. And not lose any of my roosters. I've got nine roosters right now, so I'm rooster flush because of our hatch out. And, uh, you know, if I had to choose, not that that's want any animal to die that way, but if I had to choose, I'd rather the uh, roosters get whacked. But I am missing my patriarch rooster. He's my big boy. He's missing feathers right here. And I haven't seen him. So either he flew the coop or something got him and carried him off because I haven't found his carcass. So we'll have to come back and do another inventory tonight. So I have to adjust that number. I just found another one dead in the coop. She was a Wyandotte that I had rescued, hidden up under a log. I thought maybe she was just in shock, but she must have had some internal injury. So she had cackethed in the last couple hours. So that's six carcasses we found. So obviously the next logical step is to backtrack and put my electric poultry netting back up. I don't want them to just have to stay inside the uh, greenhouse all the time. A, it gets too hot, and B, I don't have a waterer there. So at least here with the creek, they have water access. So we'll put all this back. I believe in being ready. Oh, believe in being ready. I believe in being ready. For the time is drawing near. Alrighty, so we got everything firing hot again back in place. So what I'll do is obviously refrain from letting them out in the mornings. They'll have access to this yard. And obviously the poultry netting will keep the predators out. That's the plan, at least. I'll continue to do some surveillance. We're going to keep an eye on some things, um, play some cams selectively here to see if we can figure out what that was. I'd love to have some evidence so I can see uh, what steps I need to take. But that's homesteading, right? Don't anybody tell you it's all unicorns and rainbows and bacon and eggs, right? We'll catch everybody on the next video. All right, take care, everybody.